Okay, let's start. So today I'm going to talk about micro bit with Scratch 2.0 and also the introduction of education system of Taiwan. And I'm Jonathan from Code Robot. So what do Code Robot do? I believe we uh, spoke about this uh, a year before. So let me have Jordan just briefly introduce our company. So our company is based on one model is one robot per kid. So it's, we think that the robotic education should be changed and every kid deserve the opportunity to learn rob robotics, coding, and logic and become competitive in future society, just like those have advantages financially. So we decided to combine entertainment robot and Arduino and uh, Scratch with the software we, we developed called Transformer. The Transformer is building bridges between Scratch and devices such as the RoboSapien, the Mi Arm, the drones, and the motor control car kits. So this is our software. And how about microbit? I believe most of you know about microbits. The microbit is an ARM based embedded system designed by BBC for use computer education. Jonathan, sorry, Hello? but there's a lot of noise. I don't know where is this noise. It's uh, sorry for interrupting. I don't know if it's where is this noise. Mm, please uh, let's turn off the microphones the others thank you okay hello Okay, sorry. Thank you very much. How about right now? Hi, good morning. I'm Lula. Let's. Okay, so the micro bit has to have code through JavaScript blocks, editor, and micro Python instead of, instead of Scratch. How about microbit plus scratch 2.0? So we usually have microbits and through our transformer to scratch. And that is how we do microbit with scratch. And this is our textbook that we just released just a few weeks ago. I believe this is it is the first book, the, te the first textbook about Scratch and Microbit in Taiwan. I don't know if any other Scratch and Microbit textbook out there in the world. I don't. Know. So let me show you about. It. So we're playing Microbit with Scratch 2.0, and this is our co-author called Mr. Liu. And here's the post about. So the book consists of 20, chap 20 chapters about microbit and the uh, 
scratch. And also, I will may, maybe if we have time left, I will do the demo about it. So these are the uh, the content of the textbook, and this one, this chapter is about uh, doing doing a LED on the micro bit. So let me show you. So this is our our software, and you can see that there's a lot of function for us to use Scratch and connect to. So this one we micro bits here, and the interface choose the USB you plug, and you choose this one is called. The burning the software into a board, and then we open the scratch. So, this is the code I already wrote. Is so this one we do about LED. So we have already insert like four pictures, and then after we roll the code, we press the green flag. And as it shows, so we don't need to use the the micro Python. We we just use the Scratch. So the students don't need to learn other new other new language. So we just use the Scratch as easy as we can. And so, maybe I, if later time, I will show others, show other demos with videos. Okay, let's continue. I will show you some videos that are already done by other teachers.
as you can see that, oh, sorry. As you can see that uh, he used the sensor, the motion sensors on the micro bit and used the scratch interface. And is now micro bits, uh, although micro bit is still a new thing in Taiwan, as we can see that uh, it is quickly expanding in Taiwan's scratch education. And also, let me t uh, introduce some education system in Taiwan. And the education of Taiwan system is, of Taiwan is consists basic with nine year compulsory education system. So it includes six years in elementary school and three years of junior high school. And following the compulsory comp education is that three years of senior high that follow to four years in university or college. And this is the uh, briefly in, uh, introduction of education in Taiwan. And I will later sh share this picture in the uh, group chat where with higher resolutions. So first, the elementary part. This, our elementary school span grades one to six, different from the Western countries. And we usually have the stadium uh, from Monday to Friday. So also our best basic subjects, including Mandarin, mathematics, science, and recently added English. The English is not uh, in the elementary system for, uh, it's recently added like five, uh, 10 years ago. So usually English was in middle school, not in elementary school. And this is the pictures of some of our elementary schools and their uh, computer classes. And then is junior high. Junior high is usually grade seven to nine in Western countries. So in Asia, most of Asia schools, junior high schools contain only single goal in life to score as high as you can on national senior high school entrance exam at the end of ninth grade. This is only your, your only purpose. And the trend of after school tutoring for the competition in academic scores. And then the senior high school And then is senior high school. And senior high school spans from grade 10 to 12. So there are two parts of senior high, two kinds of senior high school. The first academic senior high schools and the secondary vocational schools. The first the academic senior high schools, they need to choose between either humanities and social science or engineering or natural science. And as vocational schools place a heavier em emphasis on practical and voca vocational skills, not by the academic one. And also a, the trend of school tutoring is even more. Uh, excuse me, one question, Jonathan. Yes. Uh, they have to choose at a high school, senior high school for a bit, uh, among the humanities, engineering and natural sciences. Do they have um, uh, IT 
subjects at high school too, all of them, or just the people who goes for engineering stuff? It's more like fields, choosing the fields between the social one and the engineering and science one. So we don't distinct them very detail. So it's depending on what universities you are getting into. So, so at this point, we are just having a bigger directions for them. It's just like divide them into two ways from like the language one or the uh, science one. But all of them learning computer stuff? Only the basics ah. in Taiwan. Yeah, yeah. So it's not requirement right now, but in two years it will become requirements, the uh, coding. Like, so we are starting to teach uh, Scratch. So Scratch is becoming a requirement in Taiwan education. So, yes. And this is... Uh, Thank you. Remote. So this is a small video showing Taiwan's uh, high school life. So you can see that this is the uh, morning meeting of a uh, high school. This uh, morning meetings happens every day? Uh, or is it a special date or party? Uh, or? Uh, once a week. And once a that week. used to be every day like 20 years ago. Hmm. So this is the, during the lunch time. How many students in each classroom? Uh, it depends on public school or private school. So Private school is almost like 45 students per class, per class and about 20 classes in one grade. And the public school is about 35 to 40 students per class. Uh, it depends on which cities or county you are in. So this is the school bus. Because this school contains of uh, junior high school students and senior high school students in one campus, so it contains about seven thousand students. Mm. It's interesting to see how different are these schools among the many countries. <laughs> Thank you for yeah, these pictures. <laughs> this difference is big. Also, also, the difference is also large in Taiwan itself. This is a public school? Uh, no, it's a private school in Taichung. Private school. Uh, usually, only private school contains of a uh, school bus. We don't have school bus in public schools.
And this other pictures about high school student learning Scratch and articles. And this is sponsored by our uh, color is sponsored by color robot. So we sometimes uh, teach them in the uh, computer classes for for the preparation of uh, coming coding requirement in their academic years. And here, uh, the best but not least is the universities. So there are over a hundred higher education institutions in Taiwan. So into many aesthetic trade schools and college. And some of them are state control, like uh, public school. Okay, uh, so that university is divided by public and private, and about 25% of the, the most popular courses and accounts for 25% degree awarded. And there's also a problem in Taiwan is that the lower fertility rate lead to the crisis of to some local universities and private universities. So many of the universities are expected to be merged to other universities or even closed. So, uh, I believe that Taiwan have the lowest fertility rate in Asia. It's interesting because the schools you have just shown us has 7,000 of students. Yeah, uh, how is that? Private, uh, that's a private schools. So uh, it and also less, that particular schools contain junior high school students and senior high school students. So it contains about six grades of students. And the public schools, uh, uh, also is that, that school is in the city part of Taiwan. So uh, many, suburban cities, many suburban cities in Taiwan, uh, they, have, they, and even they have only like 10 students in a grade not the class so it's quite a big difference between cities and the suburb so yes the uh, low fertility rate is uh, quite a problem in taiwan due to the ec uh, economy and also that there are some problems of taiwan's education it's that numbers we usually compare students with scores who gets higher ranks or who gets the lower rank to decide who's better or not. So which higher scores decided who enters better universities and higher scores decide who get the positions in a better company as also. So when competition is a central philosophy of the society to evaluate a person. So our society tends to see the result of competitions rather than the practical abilities. So we can judge uh, some students with their 
uh, scores. So it's quite the problems of our education. And in the education system that focuses on growing the students' abilities, the subjective perspective of each teacher is the key. So uh, in a society like consider competition is the most basic and important way to evaluate about whether this, this students is good or not. This, uh, okay, so, the, but with the score, we cannot possible to precisely evaluate the student. Mm -hmm. So what are the expressions to our students from our nations, our society, or even our enterprises and our even parents. So right now in Taiwan is based on degrees, grades, or even your ranking, your your school's ranking. But I think the most important part is is students' capacity capabilities of solving problems. Just like English, in Taiwan, we only learning about reading or writing. We never have the proper education about uh, talking or solving the English, uh, to how to come conversations about English. We never properly learn about that. And also the computational thinking is going to be a requirement ability in the future society. And this is the, this year's scratch competitions by Ministry of Education Taiwan. And this is, uh, this, as you can see that this is held in a uh, sports stadium. So it contains about uh, 400 competitors in one stadium. And each team is consists of two students and one teacher. And every team was the best among their counties and cities. So they have, they have the prior uh, selection to, so they can be in this competitions. So the and the purpose is to make a scratch project that works along with the external sensor connect to Arduino. And also this competition is the big biggest scratch competition in Taiwan. And following the following the requirement of scratch abilities is it it is foreseeable that this competition will get uh, bigger and bigger. And here's some video about these competitions. Jonathan? Hello? Hello, Jonathan. Hi. Oh, so let me show yes. you. I have a question. Yes. How, how many students join the uh, competition of Scratch? Uh, oh, sorry. 4,000. No, no, not that much. It's like a couple <laughs> hundred, like four to five hundred. Wow. Yeah, but we can expect from, thousands, thousands in coming the incoming years. Oh, okay. yeah, from elementary school to high school. Yeah, you done. Yes.
So as you can see that each team is given the USB, USB line and also the Arduino Uno board and some sensors. So in a limited time, you need to combine these uh, sensors and board and come uh, work with your scratch project. And the competition time is about uh, two hours. So uh, at the end, So we can, so in the end, you need to show our, your, pro, your scratch project and demo to us. So it took two days for us to see all the demos for all the competitors. No, thank you. And this one is about the joystick sensors that and control the scratch. And these are some other photos of these scratch competitions. This is our Facebook group called One Robot Per Kids. And here's a link to our group and let's join the revolution of education with us. Thanks. So if you have any questions about our Taiwan education, please uh, feel free to see. To say about. Uh, sure. I think you uh, could stop sharing your screen. Now we can open for questions. Okay. A lot of people here today. Thank you for your presentation, Jonathan. For sure, we have a lot of questions. Uh, who wants to, to start? Lula? Now you can. Uh, uh, very interested about your microbit um, implementation because uh, at my school we want to do that, and it really helped me with uh, with some orientation that you were talking about, especially the levels. So um, I've been searching while you were uh, talking. Thank you. Thank you so much. I might be asking questions later on for, to your email. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah. Lula is from Mexico. She's a teacher from Mexico today. Uh, Sorry. Hola. <laughs> Sorry, Hola. I did not say I'm Mexico. I'm from Mexico. I live in a little city called Jalapa in the state of Veracruz. Uh, we have So Won King, professor in South Korea, and, yes. and we have uh, also Simon from Tanzania, Africa. So we have representatives for almost all continents here today. It's a pleasure having you here. So <laughs> what do you have, Simon? Would you like to talk something, please? So I walk around with microbit a lot uh, because I like playing around with microbit. So um, it's nice that I joined when this conversation is happening right now. Um, and my internet is not good. So, yeah. 
I have to either choose video or audio. <laughs> Hello. Uh, sorry, people. Uh, Hello? It's Can difficult. You hear me? Oh, sorry. It's a lot of people in this session Hello. together. Uh, I would like to ask you something, please. Please turn off the microphones who is not talking. And last, speak a little bit slower so everybody can understand because we have a lot of uh, interference, okay? Thank you very much. So uh, now maybe Sawan King would like to talk something, please, Sawan King. Okay, okay. Thank you for uh, presentation, Jonathan. Uh, I have some question. Uh, first is uh, what grade do they start learning coding from elementary school? Uh, about that, uh, this is not requirement yet, but in the next one or two years, it will become a requirement. So uh, I think the scratch part is starting like uh, third grade. Starting oh. from third grade. So they start to learn about scratch so i think that maybe the first grade and second grade is also there i think they are capable for learning scratch as well okay do you have a national educational system uh, sorry national educational system do you have uh no not really so and also, uh, I have the Scratch Microbeat textbook, so it probably will look like like, like this one. Uh -huh. and it will contain about the basic logic about, you can see the picture here. And yeah. also the Scratch codes here. So yes. they don't need to learn how to, they don't even need, need to learn how to type they just drag and drop these. Uh -huh. Okay, boxes. I see. Yeah. Yes. Uh, all students can learn Scratch in their school. Yes. Uh, I think the bigger problem is that the teachers in Taiwan schools. Please, uh, can you, uh, Jonathan, can you speak near the microphone, okay. please? Thank you very much. Uh, Sorry. So I think the bigger problem is that the teachers in Taiwan, they are not used to scratch. So it's a bigger problem for all this, uh, for all the teachers. Because uh, we, in, in our, uh, when I was in uh, elementary schools, during the computer class, they only teach about Microsoft Office. They don't even teach anything about the coding. So, but right now, uh, coding is a worldwide trend right now. So I think uh, we need to get the teachers to used to to used to Scratch as soon as possible, so that we can. Uh, teach them, teach the students in elementary grade. Okay, thank you. We have the same problem about teacher training yes. or uh, all students or uh, parents, you know, in Korea, uh, focused on um, entrance of university. So 
we are same problem same, ed in educational systems, but we are moving the um, student capability uh, with scratch or with coding education or uh, with uh, we call it software education and computing education. So microbit is uh, spread out in this day in Korea. Microbit is very good tools uh, for scratch or uh, programming education. So we will cooperate about the coding education world, uh, computing education. So I I will I will send the email. Uh, to corporations, Taiwan and Korea. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, about microbit in Taiwan, uh, it's only out for like less than two years right now. So basically, the uh, Arduino are still the major. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Great major ones, not the microbit. But I think the microbit will become the most uh, popular in Taiwan coding education soon. Yes, I agree with you, yeah. yeah. In Korea, similar situations, yeah. Thank you. Uh, someone, can you mention something about Collaboration among uh, um, these countries are South Korea and Taiwan. Uh, are you working together? I didn't understand. Sorry. You said they're going to oh, send a, in an email. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I want to cooperation in all countries. But microbit is. Uh, good tool, but it's not spreading in Korea. So microbit is uh, in these days. Korea's uh, Korea student or Korean teachers use the microbit with uh, Scratch. So I think uh, Jonathan example Jonathan project is help us yes for microbit education. So very interesting yeah yeah thank you jonathan yeah yeah thank you so um is there anyone that wants to ask something or mention or comments something feel free Okay, I think, uh, unfortunately, uh, I think it, it, English is a problem for most of us to better communication. Uh, but uh, let's get closer and we are open to make this bridge among countries. Uh, so we are putting all our efforts to bring everybody together. Uh, you can count on this community. Uh, I almost know everyone in this community. It's all passionate teachers, educators, and I'm sure that everybody is open to help uh, in, in exchange ideas. So that's uh, our main goal. And I'd like to, to invite everyone else from Taiwan who wants to join this group. I also ask you please to use a uh, English name on Facebook because unfortunately, unfortunately we can't speak or type in Chinese. So it's yeah. difficult to tag you or invite you <laughs> or talk about your yeah. work. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So in my 
work here to bring everybody together. Uh, I noticed that when you everybody writes the name in English or something like that, it's easier to put the people together. This week, this past week, we uh, have some of you from China writing, rewriting their names. And so we put together with people, with people in Africa or United States. So it's easier to make contact and exchange ideas. So please, let's be together, okay? Okay, thank you. I have a question, Jonathan. Uh, can you share this slide, your slide? Oh, oh, oh. Okay. oh. Uh, I will share, um, I think, on the Facebook chat. Okay, yeah, thank I will you. I'll share the slide and some other pictures in the, uh, in the group chat. Okay, thank you. Good idea. Thank you, Sawan King. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, sorry, I'm in issue. Uh, anybody want to download for a transformer to use? I can share for a link. You can copy our the chat if you want. Okay. Hello. Uh, Hello. You can share here in the chat from Zoom chat right now. Okay, okay, okay. It's a possibility. And then we can share also in our website or in Facebook chat messenger, okay? It's great. I'm still organizing our website. So the idea is to put a small presentation and links of each one so everyone can find others on the group, okay? We still work on that. <laughs> Thank you. And I'd like to ask you uh, if someone from Taiwan will be attending the Scratch conference in Boston in July. It would be great to, to meet some of you there. Uh, yeah. About, about the conference, uh, so do we need to sign up for anything to join the conference? Yes. Uh, are you going to Boston uh, this uh, year? Uh, or some of I, you? Uh, uh, we are. Uh, we are thinking about going there, but we are not sure if we need to sign up for anything for uh, the conference. The big problem is that it's already full. Uh -huh. has, has no more space. They, they send the notification. Oh. So, yes. Uh, yeah. Sadly. You, you say that who is not... Uh, but maybe some of them have uh, already made the inscriptions in the past months. And maybe are, they are planning to go there. I, okay. Uh, just let me know if you want some of you are going there, okay? We are going to, to meet, uh, to organize something in this group there. Yes. So when King, Simon, Lula, yes. and me, we are be there. We yes, we're going okay, to. Okay, I will go there at MIT, and uh, my fellow, okay, Korean team five members, join the Scratch conference. Yeah, I will very happy to see at the com. Yes, again, yeah. Great. Yeah. So, will there be any uh, other events other than than the Scratch conference in MIT, like the the same date? Will there be other uh, events?
Okay. Um, I don't know. You, you mean this year or next year? I mean the, during the conference this year. He, he means at the same time, Eloisa. I don't think so. Because uh, in Europe, we have um, the next year. So this year's, uh, this year's Scratch Conference in the United States and then next year would be in Europe. It's always like this. Last year, it was, it was in Bordeaux, France, the Scratch Conference. This year will be here uh, in Boston. So if you can't catch this conference this year in the United States, maybe you can uh, plan yourself to go to another one in Europe next year, 2019. It might be in Africa. We're trying to push for Africa. Yes. Asia as well. Yeah. Africa, yeah. Yeah. Yes. So maybe 2019 you're coming Africa. here for scratch. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, excuse me. We now should share for the. Uh, you want to learn about transformer? You can use the link. I will show now. So wait a minute. Oh, this link. Uh, you can look for this one to the chart. Everybody can download it. Uh, first link is transformer download. Our second link is for how to use the transformer to, to learn, learn about this one. Oh, thank you very much for sharing the links. Um, we are about finishing our session today. Uh, I'd like to ask if there's something else or someone who wants to uh, mention something or final considerations. Is that, that okay? So thank you very much, Jonathan, for our presentation and bringing all of your peers here. Um, it's a very good opportunity to meet you all. And please, uh, let's keep in touch, OK? Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yep. See you. Let's be touch. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.